I do like me some adventure bikes. They're the SUVs of the motorcycling world, jacks of all trades, masters of none. But that's not a bad thing, as most motorcyclists like a versatile bike that is good everywhere but doesn't necessarily need to be capable of putting down competitive laps on the track or busting out hard enduro at Romaniacs. And so when the much anticipated Yamaha Tenere 700 hit Canadian shores in the late summer of 2020, I was one of the first to get one. And I don't regret it, as this bike was the first of a new breed of very capable, less expensive, mid-sized ADV motorcycles coming to the market lately. Of course, once the T7 made a splash, the other manufacturers followed with Aprilia releasing the Touareg 660, Suzuki bringing us the V-Strom 800DE, and perhaps most anticipated of all, Honda rolling out the Transalp 750. Well, I have plenty of miles on the Tenere 700, and I recently spent a week with the Transalp, so it's time for a detailed comparison. And I do mean detailed. I rode these bikes on the highway, twisty two lanes, gravel, dirt, and even single track. So it's Honda against Yamaha, the two biggest Japanese motorcycle manufacturers going head to head for the affordable mid-sized adventure bike crown. Stay tuned for a detailed comparo, and as always, if you're enjoying the content, please consider subscribing, liking the video, and sharing it with friends. So, the accepted wisdom states that the Yamaha Tenere 700 will be better off-road and the Honda Transalp 750 will do better on pavement. And that is true to a point. But there's so much more to say on the subject that such blanket statements don't do the story justice. First, let's compare engines. Both bikes run parallel twins with 270 degree cranks. The Tenere has Yamaha's celebrated 689cc CP2 engine which also powers several other bikes including the MT-07 and which pumps out some 72 horsepower and 49-ish pound-feet of torque. The Transalp sports a new 755cc motor which is reputed to produce 90 horsepower and 55 pound-feet. I say reputed because it came to light that while the Eurobike has 90 horses, the American version only comes with 83 due to either tighter pollution or noise regulations. I'm guessing it's noise. Now I rode the Canadian Transalp and Honda has not provided the horsepower numbers on that yet, however while it felt more powerful than the Yamaha, the difference wasn't that large, so I have a feeling that we're getting the detuned bike here as well. This also happened with the new Kawasaki ZX4RR which pumps out 78 horsepower in Europe and only 56 or so in North America. Pity. Despite their similarities, head to head the two engines exhibit different personalities. Off the bottom the Yamaha feels a bit torquier and willing to lug down. It has a pleasant burble and never gets overly loud with its stock pipe. Honda, on the other hand, comes in softer than the Tenere off the bottom, but then builds to a snarling crescendo as it spools up. In the higher revs, it sounds properly aggressive from the saddle and rushes toward the red line with urgency. It sounds like the old V-Twin sport bikes. The Honda is definitely peppier and likes to rev while the Yam has more of a burble and is more luggable down low. Verdict? In a drag race the Honda wins, but not by much. Electronics? The Honda Transalp comes with 5 rider modes. Sport, Standard, Rain, Gravel and a customizable user mode. Power characteristics, braking and traction control adjust to each kind of riding as you switch modes which can be changed on the fly. The Tenere 700 comes with ABS which on the current model can be all on, all off, or on only on the front wheel. While the Honda wins for safety on the road, off-road I prefer the Yamaha's simplicity. Want a power slide? Do it. There's no intrusive traction control to stop you. Turn off ABS with one button and go sliding the back wheel effortlessly. I'm sure that with more time to dial in the Honda to my preferences, I could set it up to my liking. It's just an extra step I don't need to worry about on the Yamaha. The electronics can be important in saving your skin on pavement though. So the Honda wins on the road while the Yamaha takes it off-road once again. High tech in the dirt can sometimes be counterproductive, especially with the TC cutting in just as you need to put down some power. Both motorcycles come with a 6-speed gearbox and offer a quick shifter as an option. 
My Tenere doesn't have one, so I can't vouch for Yamaha's quick shifter, but the Transalp I rode had one and never missed a shift. Typical Honda. The Yamaha wins hands down in the suspension department. The Tenere's fork has 8.3 inches of travel and is adjustable for compression and rebound damping, but not for spring preload. However, this is still a lot better than Honda's fork, which has 7.9 inches of travel and is not adjustable. The Yam's shock is fully adjustable, has 7.9 inches of travel and has a handy preload knob, which allows the rider to dial it in without the need for tools. The Honda's shock has 7.5 inches and is only adjustable for spring preload. What does that mean to real world riding? On the road, not much. The Transalp sits a bit lower with a 33.7 inch seat height versus the Tenere's 34.4 and yes, you can feel the difference. At 6 feet tall, 182 centimeters, the Tenere feels taller to me. My wife Brooke at 5'7 or 170 centimeters finds the Transalp much more manageable. She's on the balls of her feet on the Transalp, but on her very tippy toes on the Tenere. The Tenere's longer suspension does give it more ground clearance, 9.45 inches versus the Transalp's 8.3, which does come in handy off-road, more on that later. Go, 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 go. However, the Tenere also feels more top-heavy and is hard to lift. I've had to do it plenty of times. I never put the Transalp down, but seat of the pants, it feels less top heavy despite weighing slightly more, 459 pounds wet to the Tenere's 452. Overall, the T7 suspension is better. On pavement, the Transalp is dialed in nicely and carves corners well, but off-road, the budget suspension begins to show. On a twisty paved road, the two bikes feel equally planted and are capable of impressive corner speeds. Both turn in easily, hold their line and brake and accelerate well. But on bumpy off-road, it's no contest. The Tenere 700 walks away from the Transalp. The suspension is far more composed and there's a lot less pogoing. I can carry a lot more speed with confidence on the Yamaha in every off-road situation and the T7 also bounces less parts off roots and rocks due to its greater clearance. Mind you, the Transalp went all the places that the T7 did, just slower and more carefully. In terms of comfort, the Transalp has it on the Tenere. First, its seat isn't perfect, my butt did start to get sore after a while, but it's far better than the plank on the T7. The Yamaha seat is not great, although it does look cool, very dirt bike-ish. The weather protection on the Transalp is also superior with a much taller windshield and what feels like more bike in front of you. My tester had the accessory windshield and fairing wind deflectors which also contributed to the clean air around me when riding this bike, but even without these, the Transalp's weather protection is better. Yamaha does sell an accessory tall windshield for the T7, which might even things out, but out of the box, Honda clearly catered the Transalp to fast pavement riding. Seating position on the two motorcycles also differs according to their respective missions. The Tenere 700 feels like a very big dirt bike. You sit on top of this motorcycle and it is thin and tall. The Transalp, on the other hand, feels and looks more like a road-biased bike. You sit more in the motorcycle than on top of it, like you would on a sport tour. Surprisingly, both bikes are good in the standing position. The Tenere is one of the best adventure bikes for standing with tall, wide bars and a slim middle. But the Transalp is almost as good, and standing on it feels quite natural. More natural off-road than sitting. Now, my Tenere has a pretty simple dash being the first year model, but the new T7s have a colored display with phone connectivity just like the Transalp. One is oriented vertically, the other horizontally, so it's up to your personal preference which one you like better. The Transalp's dash has more info because the Transalp has more electronics, but both bikes have pretty nice displays. Stock, the Tenere comes with a bash plate, plastic handguards and slightly knobby tires, while the Transalp has a stock luggage rack, passenger handrails and decidedly pavement oriented tires. These features underline the fact that Yamaha positions the T7 as a more off-road oriented bike, while Honda is aiming the Transalp at the road touring rider who wants to do the occasional gravel or dirt road. In terms of accessories, both manufacturers offer a wide variety of goodies from engine guards to luggage options to various other protective bits. I find the aluminum Yamaha bags to be slightly larger, 72 liters and a whole lot more sturdy than the predominantly plastic Honda ones, 59 liters, 
but the Honda bags are about 70% the price and are not bad either, though they will scuff more easily. In terms of overall price, the Tenere 700 costs a bit more as well. In the US, the Transalp costs an even 10,000, while the T7 MSRP is 10,800. In Canada, the Transalp MSRP is 13,488, while the T7 costs 13,600. But Honda stresses that their MSRP includes $870 for freight and PDI, which the Yamaha doesn't. In terms of value, the Honda is noticeably less expensive in both the US and Canada while having way more electronics, but the Yamaha has better suspension for its higher price. Which matters more is up to the individual rider and what they will use their motorcycles for. Both motorcycles are equally capable of tearing up a twisty road, the Honda is more comfortable for long distance riding, highway riding, as well as a bit better for two up. The Tenere 700 is much more composed and confidence inspiring for serious off-roading, although both are fine for the kind of gravel and dirt roads these bikes will most likely tackle. Finally, in terms of looks, both of these motorcycles have excellent fit and finish. To my eyes, the Tenere 700 with its Dakar-inspired profile looks better. The Honda looks more like a touring adventure bike, which it is. It looks good as well, just not as hard-edged and aggressive as the Yamaha. So we have to have a winner and in my mind the Honda will appeal to a wider range of riders. Most of these motorcycles are ridden primarily on pavement and the Honda's electronics, lower seat and edge and comfort give it an advantage there. It's just the easier bike to ride on pavement. Yamaha does offer factory lowering and taller windshields for the T7 but you have to pay extra. Fewer riders will take the Yamaha out for the kind of off-roading which requires the T7's superior suspension, but I'm one of those riders. If I was making the decision now to buy one of these two motorcycles, I'd still choose the Yamaha. The reason? It's less expensive to make the T7 into a comfier road bike than to upgrade the suspension on the Transalp. I ride the T7 in rougher terrain and need the extra capability. But I also recognize that most riders do not, and the Honda is plenty capable of doing what it will most likely be asked to do, and doing it will. So what kind of adventure rider are you? Are you going to push your adventure bike on the more extreme terrain, or are you going to leave the single track to the dirt bikes and use your ADV bike mostly for touring and lighter off-roading? Which one of these appeals to you? Or maybe you'd prefer the Touareg 660 or V-Strom 800DE. Please share your thoughts in the comments below, adventure on, and may the spokes be with you.